shit is fierce and all fucking me. That's how you beat that boy to death. Welcome to Agents of Screen, the first and only place to come to for movie reviews live at the cinema. I am your boy Miles, aka Midnight Cocoa Bean. If you've seen Bad Boys for Life, you'll understand that reference. And we are here for the Power Recap, season six, episode 13. This is Tommy's episode, which as I said, because of the format, we can deduce even before watching this episode that Tommy didn't kill Ghost. But I will say off the bat that this was one of the best episodes this season, if not the best episode this season. To be fair, a lot happened in this episode, tied up a lot of loose ends and questions that we had before the mid-season break. So I appreciate the writing that it's all coming kind of full circle now. The final word I will have on last week's episode is that I'm surprised in the scene where they open up Angela's casket that Junior wasn't in there like, mom, can, can I go to school now? Can I go to school now? Can, can I go to school? Like I've never seen anyone in my entire history here on earth that excited to go to school like fam chill i know you want to be educated and that but just relax but yeah back to this episode this brings back a few storylines that i completely forgot about with proctor's daughter with benny with the italians etc 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 so this episode opens up with tommy clearing up benny's body dragging him through the hallway which then takes us to Dolores's household. Dolores is Benny's sister and she is looking after Lisa Marie who is obviously Proctor's daughter. They haven't seen Benny for a while. Where could he possibly be? Lisa Marie is getting worried but Dolores and Shores are like, don't worry, your uncle Benny, he's a hard nut to crack. He's a scrappy dude. He'll make him back. It'll take a hound from hell to kill him. Little did I know that that hound from hell is Tommy Egan. What I will say about Lisa Marie, the actress that plays her, I know earlier on in the season, she used to get like little parts here and there. And I didn't think like her acting quality was very good, but because she's a child, I refrain from saying that at all. However, in this episode, she gets like the largest chunk of camera time she has in the entire history of the show. And I thought she did a great job. I thought she did a really good job acting alongside some of the major players in the show. But Vincent turns up to the house and he also fears something might have happened to Benny. And he puts some security in the house to protect Melissa Marie and Dolores, even though Dolores is not really feeling Vincent's vibe, to be honest. Tommy, meanwhile, is at his mother's house. You know, he wants to leave town. Shit's kind of hitting the fan. His castle got scooped up. Lakeisha is dead. He thinks Ghost has betrayed him. And to be honest, he's just had enough. However, he sees Ghost on TV. The news clip that everyone has seen that Ghost has been announced to be the new running mate. I forgot entirely what the name of his title is, like Lieutenant Detective. It's not that. But anyways, yes, the new running mate for the leader of the Democratic Party. And this pushes Tommy even further in his head. He said, listen, I told his mom, I need to kill Ghost. He said, you can't get kill Ghost. You guys have grown up from since then. But you know, Tommy, he loves to learn the hard way. But Tommy, he believes what he believes. He's stubborn. So he goes and he leaves. Back to Aunt Dolores' house. Lisa Marie is in her bedroom and she's got a laptop out. And she's playing the recording. The recording that we thought was lost. What happened to it, we find out in this episode. It has a recording basically implicating Tommy and Ghost that they murdered Lobos and it's got their names on it, it's got, it implicates them. Hard evidence. I believe this is the first time that Lisa Marie has actually played the recorder and I think her dad gave it to her and she seems startled so I think that's the case. While she's listening to it, Dolores kind of eavesdropping, she hears what's going on, she said what's that? She hears it for herself and she has the idea, okay we need to take it to the higher up because even though they don't know exactly who the recording is of, all they hear is ghosts. At this point they don't know who Ghost is, they don't know who Tommy is, it's just names on a tape but if they take it to the higher ups, in this case Uncle Carlo, one of the higher ups in the Italian mob and it can give them more information about what happened to Proctor etc. Before they take it to him however they meet up with Tariq in a diner to play the recording for him so he hears it first and of course he's de denying all knowledge, doesn't know who Tommy is, doesn't know who Ghost is and he obviously has his own agenda as well and he offers to say okay you know what let me take it to my mom she may know something and obviously this is a ploy on his part to try and cover his tracks, Tommy's tracks, Ghost tracks etc. But Benny's sister Dolores she doesn't trust Tariq at all, especially a man that like shaves his eyebrows. Like, why would you trust a man like that? And he's been a snake and a slime ball. You can just smell it through the screen as she can. And I know she's Italian, so she thinks he's a he's a moulinier. But she's saying, hold on, hold on. These things are not adding up. 
You sure you don't know who Tommy is? So, okay, the door was randomly left open so someone can get inside to kill Proctor. Okay, so it was just you alone in the house? So it must have been you. She, she's doing all of this in her head. So she doesn't ex So she doesn't trust him at all. And Lisa Marie, at this point, she seems to be quite a smart girl, but at this point, she still seems quite naive to the situation and what's going on. <laughs> As I say, she's a smart girl. In this episode, she her her IQ seemed to go up like tenfold. At one point, she was like Colombo, Murder, She Wrote, all she pulling together all these clues all of a sudden like as i said in the previous history of lisa marie's character she seemed quite dumb but i don't know she i don't know she got a thunderstone and turned to a writer or something she's evolved so Tariq meets up with tommy to tell him like listen they have a recording that implicates you but i denied that i knew you but i do know where lisa marie lives like look how quickly he's looking to give her up. look how quickly he's looking to give her up like if you you know in jumanji the movie when they put like the attributes on top of the screen Tariq's attributes will be top snake just like sax if Tariq was to put on the harry potter sort in hat he also would be in slivering house so we're gonna fast forward to where ghost is making his official announcement of his political involvements in the democratic party and tommy manages to sneak in he's spying on ghost the security in the building recognize him they're making their way towards him he recognizes that they recognize him and he makes his way outside on the way outside he bumps into detective rodriguez aka blanca and she says oh funny to bump into you here and gives him an evidence bag with Lakeisha's belongings. In this bag, there's an earring and his, in his head, he's thinking, oh shit, that's half of the earring that Holly stole from Tasha. That's not Lakeisha's earring. Hold on a second, Ghost didn't kill Lakeisha. It was Tasha, so he's working all of this in his head. Up until this point, he saw, he thought that Ghost did everything to him. And even Blanca's trying to tell him like, yo, Ghost didn't do it. He has a solid alibi. But even then, he still didn't want to believe it. It's only when he saw like hard evidence in front of his face that he decided to change his mind. And of course, Tommy, in this episode, he's wearing some kind of Edward Scissorhand type jacket. Tommy goes to see Tasha and straight off the bat, Tommy lets Tasha know what he's found out. Why did you allow me to think that it was Ghost? And, and Tasha, she she knows, she knows Tommy. She knows what he's on. So she's blubbering. She's saying like, I had to do it. Like she was going to snitch on us. She's tried to bring out the, the paperwork that showed that she was an informant. She had to do what she had to do, etc, etc. And Tommy said, you know, hear what? dead all of that tour i don't care what you say you are still the one that pulled the trigger so he pulls out the gun she accepts her fate she turns around and she's waiting for a bullet to penetrate the back of her skull so just listen if it had to be anyone i'm glad that it's you just promise that you just take care of of Tariq and yaz he, he nods and he's got the bullet right in her face how would you feel if you wake up one morning and saw a big m16 nozzle at your jaw i would say free buju but buju's free fam me though hmm i think she had like a bulletproof weave on on that back so if she was to take it to the back of the head she would have been all right but you know that's just my speculation i can't prove that but tommy him and tasha have a lot of history they're like family basically so ultimately he decides to let her go Back to Dolores' house, she is about to leave Lisa Marie by herself. She's gonna, she's made a copy, she's gonna take her to Uncle Carlo. Meanwhile, Tommy meets up with Ghost in a scene that we've seen in the finale of the mid-season break when they meet up on, it's like on a rooftop or in an abandoned warehouse type situation outside. Tommy tells Ghost like, I realized I was wrong. I realized that you weren't the one that killed Akeisha. But in his mind, he still believes that Ghost was the one that snitched on him to get his crew wrapped up. Ghost denies that to his face as well. So listen, I didn't do that shit either. And furthermore, that whole shit with, with Proctor, he betrayed the both of us. And Ghost says, listen, I'm tired of all this shit. Listen, I, you need me, I don't need you. And that's why you're so upset, I'm leaving. When he leaves, Toby backs out the tool. He says, listen, you get to have everything and I have nothing. My dad is gone. The love of my life is gone. My whole plan for the future is gone and you, you're just not just gonna leave me here. But before that even escalates, a stray bullets fries from 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 some from somewhere. Then they go into their classic Tommy and Ghost tag team Ebony and Ivory special. They realize there's two people in the warehouse. They're shooting, shooting. One person gets shot. Tommy goes up into the warehouse. Realize he thought it was the Italians, but he sees there's a black guy on the ground. Quick note: you guys probably realize already, but that guy was Cedric the Entertainer, legendary comedian. Tommy's then closing in on the second shooter. But you realize he's run out of bullets. So he said, oh, fuck it. And just 
proceeds to escape. The, the second shoot is barking shots at him, but somehow, even though it's a Uzi or something, no bullets hit his car. Magically, miraculous, white Jesus lives. Tommy wasting no time goes to Lisa Marie's house. Obviously, Tariq has told him her whereabouts and she's been left by herself. Well, not by herself, she has the guards around the house, but you know, that's light work for Tommy. He goes into Jason Bourne, AKA Johnny English reborn mode, and takes out the guards, takes Lisa Marie. And obviously in the car, she's scared of the situation. She don't know who this guy is. So she's playing mute, she ain't saying a word. Tommy, trying to get information out of her, name drops Tariq. So see, again, murder she wrote, she He's putting two and two together and saying, hold on, you know Tariq? It's like, yeah, he, how do you think I found you? And Lisa Marie also lets Tommy know that there is a copy and it's with Uncle Carlo. Tommy doesn't know that the necklace around her neck bears the original copy of the recording. But Tommy takes her to his house and he leaves her in the care of his mother, his crackhead mother, and says, listen, don't talk, don't do nothing just look after her and he leaves because he's got shit to do fast forward back to dolores's house where is the girl they're crying she's missing where is she they get a call from tommy they still don't know who it is at the moment but vincent is in the building tommy calls to arrange some type of a trade for lisa marie and a copy of the recording they manage to come to some sort of agreement however vinnie says hold on i, I recognize that voice I, I, I recognize eminem's voice that's tommy egan so then even carlo is saying like raw Oh, this is this is actually your fault you were the one that handled that whole tommy teresi tommy situation so as a result of your poor handling and poor management of that situation that has a trickle down effect which has resulted in the kidnapping of lisa marie so they obviously want to get her back they fear that means she might be dead so vincent is feeling the pressure because he knows tommy's a hothead as well so there's no telling what could happen back at tommy's house mommy egan is doing my little pony braids and lisa marie's hair and lisa marie as i said aka murder she wrote realizes that this is an opportunity to get some more information because she's talking up a hell of a storm they get to talking and she basically asks is jamie ghost because she keeps on hearing them talking about jamie 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 is jamie ghost before tommy's mother has a chance to even answer tommy comes back home and he's like listen i, I thought i just told you to watch her don't talk to her and even in that very same instance paz comes to the door which is good again it kind of filling in the blanks of the whole situation we've seen a previous episode paz came to tommy's door to try and convince him to kill ghost for her but he lets her in she makes her way into the apartment she's offering money they're in the cut wait he's nervous as well because obviously he's got a random underage child in his house and through this interaction tommy says the word ghost when talking to paz and referring to jamie and again lisa marie thinks like hold on a second you know ghost and you know Tariq and Tariq knows go so everything's kind of adding up he makes Paz leave the apartment but this was quite interesting because after that Tommy and his mother were talking right by the door so Paz could have heard what was going on inside and just started making up more noise again but we'll forgive that Tommy takes Lisa Marie into his card and he's looking to make that trade that he arranged earlier Lisa Marie is doing her Colombo thing and trying to find out even more information Tommy says listen you need to shut up and when she's bored in the car she's looking around she finds a ring in the glove compartment which was obviously the engagement ring that Tommy was supposed to give to Lakeisha and in this conversation it kind of leads into them having a kind of deep conversation they realize that they have mutual pains mutual tragedies people died in their lives both of their mothers being drug addicts and she asks him did you kill my father he doesn't answer however he says to her do you realize what your father actually did for a living he was filthy he was a criminal just like i am she says she knows exactly who her father is because she overheard his and uncle benny's conversation about purposely making her mother relapse and not doing anything to stop her death but lisa marie because she's lost her father she's lost uncle benny now and her mother she says she feels so alone alone in the world tommy relates to exactly what she's talking about and it seems like he's gonna console her but in that same moment two bit calls and two bit says like we saw in the previous episode he tells tommy that dre was the one that ratted them out to the police so in light of the information that has just been received and earlier in the episode Tommy realizes that all the things that he wanted to kill Ghost for, Ghost didn't do a single one of those things. So he realizes that Ghost could potentially be in danger and someone, Dre for example, is going to kill him. So he decides to take Lisa Marie home. Tommy meets up with Tariq to share the information that he's just received, but Tariq he having 
a bar of it. He said, I don't care what Ghost didn't do. If Dre wants to kill Ghost, I'm not getting in the way of it. And like, in these episodes so far, we haven't seen much of Tariq, but you know, you could always count on him to remind us of what a little prick that he is. Even still now, I don't fully understand why he hates Ghost so much. But Tommy tries to explain to him like, listen, I hated my father too. And it wasn't until I killed him that I realized that things are not as simple as they seem. They're much more complex. And I need you to be on my side because someone could be trying to kill your father. So I need your help so we could potentially stop this. Tariq, as I said, he's not even having a single bar of it. So. Tommy has to do it on his own. Tommy tries to go to Truth in his car, but he is cut off and intercepted by the Italians headed by Vincent. Now this scene was kind of dumb for me. It was entertaining, but it was dumb at the same time. If your objective is to kill Tommy, I know you guys have seen Training Day, when the Russians wanted to kill Alonso, they cut him off in the same way by the traffic light, wind down the window, no talking, ratatata. Just like that, no, maybe not just like that. But Vincent, he wants to roll down the window and say like, oh, Tommy, he thought he could get away or whatever shit you were saying. Tommy just puts his foot down on the accelerator. Bear in mind, they could kill him at any point. He is surrounded by vehicles. They could just open fire on him and kill him, but for some reason they don't, obviously for entertainment purposes. But he rams Vincent's car head on, seemingly writing him off and it ensues in some mad gunfight battle. Again, he's on that Jason Bourne, John Wick vibe. He's killing people left and right, using the car as cover, making the car roll forward. He's killing, he killed everyone, taking people's guns, people begging for their life. He's doing absolute madness. So this seems like it'll be Tommy's last episode. So it was good to see him go out with a bang. Obviously, I'm not justifying murder, but this is fiction at the end of the day, and we want to be entertained. So he seemingly kills everyone, but then Vincent gets the drop on him, even though Vincent is kind of injured. And again, yet another opportunity for Vincent to kill Tommy. But he wants to be a chatty patty, like, fam, just pull the trigger. Like, what's wrong with you? Makes him turn around and turn slow. And obviously, Tommy manages to move the gun. Vincent is already injured. He doesn't stand a chance. And Tommy proceeds to... Fucking... Beat that boy. That's how much he was hitting him. That's how he beat that boy to death. I was that here boy. I will be here boy. They should have played that tune. It's a 50 cent tune as well. They should have played that. But in, in that scene, the graphics were quite poor. When Vincent's face was turned to the side, that should look like an Instagram filter. The Italians and Vincent out of the equation. Tommy now has to walk to truth. And it takes you back to that, to the point of view of where Dre saw Tommy outside of the club. The boss goes past, he does the Bruce Wayne Batman shit, enter the club. And we finally arrive, oh my God, at the pivotal moment in the episode. One of the most pivotal moments in the episode and the show in general. Tommy walks into truth and Ghost is on the floor already. I'm getting emotional. The wound on his chest is getting bigger by the second. The life, the life is leaving is, it's so difficult for me to talk about. The life is leaving his eyes. And, and, and Tommy was coming to the club. Let me compose myself. <laughs> oh, why did you guys watch me chat so much shit? Anyways, Tommy was coming to truth to try and prevent Ghost's death. And obviously, as I said, he meets Ghost already with a seemingly fatal wound already. Tommy asks him because he saw Dre outside, like, was, was Dre the one that did this? He was like, no, 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 it wasn't Dre. And then at that moment, you can see Ghost's eyes move somewhere upstairs. The camera doesn't pan there, but both Tommy and Ghost look upstairs. And Tommy's f expression, he seems like he, he can't believe who he's seeing. Who is it? We don't know. He looks like he's going to pull his gun out but Ghost says to him like no just let it go at first it sounds like let her go but it's, he just says just let it go Tommy just just let it go but that was quite an emotional scene but let's address the 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 elephant in the room is Ghost actually dead for real for real for real is he actually dead I know it seemed like we watched him die but I, I'm, I'm not believing it I refuse to call me ignorant call me naive 
call me stupid but i'm not believing it but because but because of the expression on tommy's face i'm guessing it's someone that's close to home we have to assume is it Tariq? i don't think tasha is on it like that like there's been a couple instances where she had to pull a trigger and she didn't or she was very hesitant too Tariq seems like he believes in himself to pull the trigger so is it Tariq? I feel I feel like that's too obvious though I feel like it's too obvious if before all the candidates all the suspects I think people would have guessed it to be Tariq but I, one I don't believe Ghost is dead and two I think that one was too obvious but boy I, f I still think there's more twists in the tale yet but anyways the police sirens are getting closer and closer Tommy he realizes that there's nothing that can be done so he has to leave ghost dead dead in the middle of truth tommy goes back to his mother's house it's the next morning now well it's either the next morning or days after but because of how he was going on at the beginning of the episode she thinks because she's seen the news she thinks that he was the one that killed ghost and he said like listen mom i wasn't the one who did it but she goes into a whole tirade about like how, how could you kill ghost it was your brother you will never be half the man that ghost is he you were jealous of him he was always better than you, you were just jealous and better that you know he saw outside of queens and wanted more than just a drug filled life and he says to her, listen mom like i'm your own flesh and blood you can't you can't turn your back on me you need me i'm the only one that you have and she listens to well no honey ghost actually left me money in his will so now i do not need you so tommy now realizing that slowly but surely he has nothing left for him but trouble and problems and and horrible memories in new york he leaves the house i'm glad anyway like tommy's mom, mother's a bitch anyway she's she's probably going to use that will money to put it straight up in her nose because obviously she's a, she's a crackhead and i'm sure if there's another power spin-off she might appear in it down the line having spent all of her money mark me on that however speaking of the will tommy's mother says that hey ghost did leave something for you and he gives him a manila envelope we, he said oh but don't open it here he leaves and what ghost leave him is a rebuilt version of his first car a good little easter egg nostalgic moment you know how much he loved that car where he got shot up and ghost tried to kill tommy two bit calls tommy again and let him know that listen i know who snitched and told the feds that you killed poncho it was spank he's out of jail he's walking free he's eating ice cream and biscuits on the sidewalk he never looked so happy in his life and tommy rolls up on spank and spank just heard the engine alone and he knew who it was and obviously spank tries to i still can't get over how his name is Spanky. How are you a street don and your name is Spanky? How did you get that name? If it, I, I can see why he snitched now, because if he was in prison with a name Spanky, boy, he would have been someone's princess for real. Yeah, and Spank tries to justify his behavior. So listen, I, like, I just told the feds what they wanted to hear. I would never go on the stand. I ain't trying to do life in prison, you know? You know, you know how I give it up, but Tommy's like, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. I, I, I figured out, all right, cool. But you know what, Spank, I'm gonna be leaving. And Spank is like, yeah, for real? You, you, yo, you have to tell me where you're going. He says, ah, I could tell you, but I'm gonna have to kill you. I'm going to California, bam. Shoots him in his eye in his eye and i quite like that shot as well not the actual bullet shot but as he drops to the floor the milkshake goes under the wheel and you see some pink liquid splattered everywhere tommy goes back to lisa marie's house she answers <laughs> she answers the door <laughs> how I, I know the italians are there with most of them but how is no one protecting the house and how is she after recently being kidnapped answering the door by herself but anyway she has the copy she destroys the copy she also lets him know that like, listen that i had the original the whole time she gives it to him he takes and he starts starts crunching it like a biscuit and she says to him i know you killed my dad and he doesn't confirm it but he says regardless if i did or didn't i know you might feel a way about this so if in the future if you ever come searching for me i'll understand i feel like they took that bar directly from kill bill you remember in kill bill when Uma Thurman character kills Vivica Fox's character and her daughter walks in she says the same thing I know you want to hate me but if you come for me in the future I understand I think like they 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 bit that directly Tommy leaves you know he's heading up the highway 
probably to LA. He is on the radio that Councilman Tate is going to take the place of James St. Patrick as the candidate for the Democratic Party. So that also places a gem of doubt in your head. So hmm, it could be Tate because he has motive to do so. You know, Warren G regulators playing on the radio and he heads off into the sunset. Is the last, this, will, this is what we will see of, of Tommy Egan. Only time will tell. There are only two episodes left. And it seems from the preview for next week, this is gonna be Tate's episode. I really enjoy this episode. And we're getting closer to the end and the suspects are running out. The signs are pointing towards Tariq, as I said, due to this being Tate's episode, that could mean we have to eliminate him as a suspect. So that just leaves Tasha and Tariq. But I believe, as I said in the beginning of my recaps, I don't believe it's any of them because I feel that's too obvious. So we're gonna have to wait and see. But what are you guys saying? Tell me, give me some hope that Ghost is still alive. Give me some answers on who killed Ghost. Make it make sense for me. And I'll see you guys same time next week. I have been your boy, Miles, AKA Midnight Coco Bean. A. Hey, we've been the Asians of Screen and until the next video coming extremely soon, peace. Can't believe it, Ghost can't be dead, bro. Ghost can't be dead.